Howdy, how's it going? My name's Dabby Chappie, and today it's time to throw out your hard-earned money to sate your never-ending cardboard addiction, because it's time to dip into the marriage between nerddom's two towers, the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Like a compressed stoplight or a delicious Superman ice cream, the Ravnica book is a colorful cacophony of the tabletop pillars of the world, Dungeons and Dragons, and Magic the Gathering. And since I just went over the lore of Ravnica last week with my boy Rustage, I feel like it's time to step into the sun of the dungeon once more and talk about how you can bring your own stories to the land of cardboard and dice. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you have a problem with this land destruction that I keep pulling out of my deck, feel free to lose your games however you want. Also, real quick, I want to give a quick shout out to my new patrons this month. Wyatt Riffle! That's it this month. Thank you, Wyatt Riffle. I love you. I love everything about you. You are the best person in this world, and you are the only thing that gives me sunlight in this bleak, dark eternity. But, with that out of the way, let's begin. So, the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica brought us a whole slew of new features to add to the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, and a considerate amount of it isn't even world exclusive, so, like a beautiful bastard, let's just jump right into it. Human and Elves in Ravnica are just the same as they are in normal 5e, and the Goblin is the very same as in Volo's Guide to Monsters, but it should be mentioned that High Elves have been reflavored as Simic Combine Elves, the Wood Elves are the Silhana, and Dark Elves are the Dev Kareen, which also remove their traditional dark skin and traded out for wanting to work with the Golgari bug people, but besides that, these are all just reskins of the stories you know and love. Moving on to the first actual new race, you might recognize centaurs as being those creatures that make people wonder, is that a furry or is he just hot? Centaurs get a bonus to strength and wisdom, a movement speed of 40 feet, the larger size trait that all non-large large creatures get, as well as a difficulty in climbing things due to their hoofy legs. They also have a natural weapon in the form of their hooves, and I don't hate the natural weapon because you actually get to use it as a bonus action whenever you charge at least 30 feet in a straight line. Finally, centaurs can naturally know Sylvan, and in a first for 5e, they aren't considered humanoids. Instead, centaurs have the Fey Tag, which immediately makes them the worst race in the entire game, regardless of how cool all of their other abilities are. If you want to be a horseman of the apocalypse, do not nay the centaur. Get it? I said nay, because cause it's a horse. Yeah, get it. Th these are the jokes. Up next, Loxodons are the other maybe furry race that makes you think, is that a trunk in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Loxodons get an increase in con and wisdom, the powerful build trait, advantage against charms and being frightened, as well as advantage to any checks involving smell. They also get a natural armor of 12 plus con, and a trunk that can lift stuff, push stuff, grab stuff, or beat stuff up. That natural armor is actually pretty great. It's the first time that I've seen AC calculated without decks on a race besides the turtle, and it means that you can reliably make dexterity your dump stat on most classes, which really frees you up if you're using the point by system, and it means that you can really focus on what you want to do instead of knowing that you have to pick decks to be viable or else you'll just die. Next up we have the Mighty Minotaur, a race that you can bring to any D&D session you want, and honestly I don't see Minotaurs often enough, but judging by this class they are absolutely roided out. Many mini Minotaurs get a bonus to strength and con, proficiency in either intimidation or persuasion, horns as natural weapons, and they can use those horns to either gore people when the Minotaur charges, or shove them away after an attack. Like the centaur, normally I dislike natural weapons just on principle since they don't really do anything that a weapon can't do better and I almost always forget that they're there, but the minotaur is another case of them doing natural weapons right, with the goring rush ability giving an opportunity to use the natural weapon in addition to your normal abilities instead of just in place of them. Overall, the minotaur is a fantastic martial fighter and it will tear up the battlefield as soon as it starts seeing red. Now the next race known as the Vidalcan see the world more in terms of facts and figures than in terms of raw emotion and feeling. Finding places in guilds like the Azorius Senate, the Simic Combine, and even the Izzet League, the Dalkin take pride in understanding the concepts of the world and what it can and can't do, and always push that what it can do part as hard as they possibly can. The Dalkin get a bonus to intelligence and wisdom, advantage on all mental saving throws, they can breathe underwater for an hour, and they can choose a skill and a tool to both be proficient in and add a d4 to whenever they use them. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, and I'm not a huge fan of having bonuses to two mental scores, since it's not overly useful since most classes are only ever going to need one but having advantage on all mental saves is crazy good, and it makes me psyched to play them just to feel all that unearned confidence in being smart. Finally, the last race is the final Ravnica exclusive, the Simic Hybrids. Simic Hybrids, if you've watched the last video, are overwhelmingly in the Simic Combine, hence the name, and they are the creatures that are modified to be better than the average man. Simic Hybrids get increases to con and one other ability score of their choice, as well as dark vision, and then, holy jeez, do they get a lot of choices. For starters, they can choose either a climbing speed, underwater skills, or the ability to glide, and then later on they can choose between new appendages to snap and grab people, a minor bonus to AC, or some sick acid spit. See, I miss the days where races had a lot of choices in what they could be, and the Simic Hybrid really brings that back for me, and while it doesn't really strike me as a modified human, elf, or Vidalcan, I really don't mind since it doesn't skimp on letting me feel like a crazy science experiment. But races aren't the only thing that the Guildmaster's Guide brought
brought to the table, as the Ravnica book has also brought us two new subclasses, one very much welcomed, and the other bringing back Vietnam flashbacks. First off, we have the much appreciated new druid subclass, the Circle of Spores, representing the fungal nature of the Golgari Swarm. When you pick up the circle, you start out by getting a halo of spores that deals minor damage around you, as well as the choice to pump up the poison by infusing it with your wild shape to do more damage and give you some temporary HP. After that, you can reanimate corpses into your own fungus zombies, you can bomb an area with your halo of spores, and eventually the rot in your brain will prevent you from getting blinded, deafened, and poisoned, and it even makes you immune to critical hits. That last ability is really ridiculous, and the aggressiveness of this whole subclass can really influence druid players to take up the front lines as a force of necrotic nature. On the other hand, the new cleric domain gives me a migraine, because now we have ELEVEN clerical archetypes, which is now the highest amount of any class, even the wizard! But ignoring the ludicrousness of it, the order domain gives you proficiency in both heavy armor and either intimidation or persuasion, the power to have your allies attack whenever you target them with a spell, the ability to charm everyone around you, you can cast enchantment spells faster than the average bear, you get a psychic divine strike, and your final ability lets you curse whoever you end up hitting with said divine strike so that they take more damage from your allies. This subclass is the absolute embodiment of Command and Conquer. And while I have my own grievances with getting another cleric class, at the very least, this one seems like it completely kicks ass. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment, all that good stuff. Don't attempt to rise up against our dreadlord Nicol Bolas, for he's the dragon god that will rule all of us, as is his divine right. And if you're interested, maybe support me on Patreon so that I can finally buy a magic deck and not just pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Actually, to be fair, I'm gonna keep pretending like I know what I'm talking about anyway. That's the job! But yeah, Davy out.